hard to land or what? It was a pleasure to meet you. I'm Greg Schwarzvasti with Deepest Dream. Hi, nice to meet you, Greg. Great, great to meet you. I, I really love Space Cadet. First off, it's such a resonant film because I wish, you know, six years after his passing, I talked more to my dad. Can you mm. talk about, I think that's a very big part of your movie. Can you just talk about that, that element and how you worked it into your your yeah. script? Because I thought it was just really important to have. Oh, I'm so, I'm so glad that that spoke to you. Um, yeah, I, you know, this is the first comedy that I've ever made, but for some reason, grief found its way into <laughs> this, even though it, it's not a drama. And I've written, I write about grief a lot and I don't know exactly why, but um, it's, I think I just relate to this feeling of, you know, having to like work past elements that are in your head in order and in your heart in order to get to where you want to go. And um, this story was partially inspired by my best friend who lost her mom when we were young and watching her like go back and revisit her dream in spite of her grief was so inspiring to me. Um, and so that felt real, like that's something that people have to do. Sometimes life, you know, sideswipes you. And I'm very, you know, touched by how people work through those moments and in fact become like more whole people because of those setbacks. Yeah, you know, Liz, on a personal level and on a, on a selfish level, is it kind of cool that you can pat yourself on the back because Space Cadet, someone can go in and say, well, this is a light, fluffy comedy with Emma Roberts. And I'm, they're going to, there might be one dimensional characters, but I'm going to have a good time. Guess what? Characters are three dimensional. Dimensional. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of resonance to it and there's a lot of heart to it. Did you know going inside that this, this, this is what you were going to do? Because you could have made that kind of comedy and it would have worked, but you brought yeah. so much more heart to it in soul, like you said. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. And that, yeah, that was the goal because I, I just, you know, I have a funny touchstone for this, which is um, the movie Dumb and Dumber, which could not be a more over the top broad comedy. But there's a scene in that where Jim Carrey is trying to convince Jeff Daniels that they should go to Aspen and pursue Lauren Holly with the uh, with the briefcase full of money. And he's like standing at the window in the set of their apartment. And he looks out the window and he says, I'm sick and tired of being a nobody. And Jim Carrey's eyes fill with tears. It's like he's in a drama. In that moment, he's in a drama. But that's the moment that makes it possible for you to put up with all the nonsense of the rest of that movie. Because you care about him. You see there's a real person underneath all of the nonsense. And so I very much plan to emulate that formula. You know, what did you, what did you love about Rex? Because I think on a deeper level, she can come off as very extroverted. And some might, some might initially think that she's shallow, but when you get, get in the weeds, she's a really deep person in the fact that she's an empath. And when people are mean to yeah. her, she does not become mean or vengeful back. She continues to pour love into people. Can you yeah. just talk about shaping that character? Because I thought sure. she was just so likable and wonderful. Well, I'm I'm so glad that you feel that way. I mean, I feel like Emma just did an amazing job making her so just charming and like full of heart. Um, you know, I had an agenda with this character, which was to show all of these characteristics that typically would mean that someone's not taken seriously and to then kind of flip them on their head. And particularly, you know, for women, it's like a lot of times we're encouraged to act more like men in order to be taken seriously. And so I wanted her to be very feminine and sort of dress feminine. I wanted her to be very kind because oftentimes that's looked at as a weakness. <laughs> Being kind to other people, like sometimes can be like, well, you're soft, you're not competitive enough. But I wanted her to, you know, have skills that 
have characteristics that would eventually be revealed as skills that initially seemed like, oh, she's not a good candidate here. But I think the reason that you love her is because she's excited about everybody else. She never plays, she's never too cool for school. She's never like, oh, I'm not impressed with your resume. She's like, oh my God, you're a physicist, <laughs> you know? You know, on the cool for school part, Liz, you, you being a su successful writer, filmmaker, producer, you could close your doors and just continue to work with your colleagues. But just looking at your all your information, you're willing to work with up and coming writers or people just as far as a mentor and a tutor. Where does that come from as well? Because you're not shutting that door when you could easily do that. Well, um, you know, I have some grievances with our industry, <laughs> uh, you know, and I which sort of informs the anti-elitist message of this movie in many ways. I, I'm i just, I'm really bothered that it's so difficult for people to break into Hollywood um, because it, it's like, I, I want as much competition as possible. I wanna be working alongside the best people, like fighting for jobs against the best people. I don't wanna be working with people who are like everybody else, or who got in because of some connection or what have you, I don't think it's fair that to get basic information about how to build a writing career, you have to spend, you know, 150 grand to go to film school. So what I try to do, you know, with the workshops that I teach or the people that I mentor is just give that information away for free. Like, here's what you have to do. Here are the samples you have to build. Here's what they have to be like, um, or if not for free, for a low, low price. <laughs> um, just because, yeah, I don't, it, it bothers me when the system isn't fair. Liz, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed Space Cadet. And I, I held it back as because I was about to weep too, thinking about my, my father and your story. So I really appreciate all your time. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate it.